Hey everybody, this is Russ from Retro Game Core. It might surprise you, but one of the most common questions I get on this channel has nothing to do with gaming. With almost every single video, I will get a comment that will say, hey, what kind of keyboard is that on your desk? And this is called the Nufi Air 75. It's a low profile mechanical keyboard. And I picked it up about a year ago and I've been using it ever since. In fact, I love it so much that I ended up buying two of them, one to have at the home and then also here at the studio. Well, today we're gonna talk all about this keyboard by reviewing the new version two that just came out. And in addition to a host of new features, it also comes in two new colors. And so this video will kind of be a two-parter. We're gonna talk about my experience over the past year and just using this keyboard. But then I also wanna go over some of the features of version two because they've made some pretty significant improvements as well. And by the end of this video, I have two goals in mind. Number one, if you're in the market for a new keyboard, I'm hoping that this will give you all the information you need of whether or not this one will be a good fit for you. And then secondly, if you already own the old Air 75, we're going to see whether or not it's going to be worth that upgrade as well. Anyway, even though we're just reviewing a keyboard, I got a lot of things to say. And so without any further delay, let's go ahead and jump in. Okay, to start, let's talk about the pricing and options that you have available. Number one, the retail price here is $120. That is quite expensive for a keyboard, but as far as mechanical keyboards go, that's about par for the course. Now, like I mentioned before, we have three different color options available with version two. In addition to the traditional gray color that I've been using for the past year, we also have new white and black colorways. And when you're purchasing this device, you're gonna have a variety of different switches that you can choose from, but bear in mind that these keyboards have been selling way more than they expected, and so many options are not available, at least right now. Now, personally, I bought my original keyboard from Amazon and they had them available there. But unfortunately, the version twos are not there yet, but the version ones are. And the price is about the same between the two, although Amazon will often have them on sale. And at least for me, when I ordered from their website, it did charge me shipping. So depending on when you're actually watching this video, it may already be up on Amazon or you'll have to go directly through them. Next, we'll go over some of these specs. Now, I'm not gonna go into full detail about keyboards and switches and caps like I did in my previous keyboard video. Instead, we'll just kind of talk about some of the main features. Number one, this is a 75% keyboard, which means it's not gonna come with its own dedicated number pad. However, if you do need a number pad, they have what they call the Air 96, and that one does have it. However, bear in mind, this is still a version one keyboard, so they don't have a version two yet for this one. Anyway, going back to the specs here, there's a couple things worth noting. Number one, it does have backlight RGB LEDs, and there are 40 different backlight modes that you can choose from. We'll show them off here in this video. In addition, this keyboard is gonna work with basically any operating system you can throw at it, and it has a variety of connectivity modes. In addition to wired and Bluetooth 5.1, they also have a 2.4 gigahertz dongle, which has been upgraded to have a 1000 hertz polling rate. And this is kind of the gold standard when it comes to low latency keyboards, which means that you could potentially use this for gaming. Additionally, they've upgraded the battery size. The previous one was 2500 milliamp hours, but the new one here is 4000. And according to the website, you'll get between 35 and 57 hours of use with one single charge when using RGB lights. And if you turn the lights off, you should get up to 220. Now in all my testing, I did it with the RGB lights and I got an average about 45 hours myself. So over the past couple weeks that I've been testing out these keyboards, I got about a week into it before I needed to charge it back up. And finally, the other hardware upgrade they've done is they've changed the material of the keycaps. These are now double shot PBT, and without getting into the fine details, that means they're going to be a lot more durable and that the legends will not wear off. And finally, another thing I learned about keyboards when making this video is that the version 2 of the Air 75 are now compliant with QMK VIA. And if you don't know what that means, don't feel bad because I didn't either. In a nutshell, this is an open source project that will allow you to basically customize any sort of key or macro on the keyboard itself. This is obviously a very advanced feature, but it is something that a lot of people have been requesting, so it is pretty cool that they've added it here. Now, in addition to the traditional Gatoron switches that were available in version 1, which by the way are the linear red, clicky blue, and tactile brown, Nufi's actually been creating some of their own switches, and these are also available now with the version 2. Now, I'm definitely not smart enough to really know the difference between each of these, but I'm going to leave the specs up here, and I also have samples that we'll test later in the video. But before we get to that, let's go ahead and do an unboxing. Now, full disclosure, I personally bought a version 2. It's the white one that you see here. But then as my white one was shipping, I got an email from Nufi, and they asked if I wanted a review unit as well. 
So just so I could do a comparison, I said yes, and please send me a black one so I can compare the colors. So this is kind of a mixed review here in the fact that I bought one, but then I also got one for review. Either way, all of my same disclosures apply. I'm not getting paid in any way for this review, and all opinions are my own, and Nufi is not seeing this video ahead of time. Anyway, let's go ahead and have a look inside the box. It's going to come with a bunch of waifu stickers if you're into that, but most importantly, it also comes with a quick guide. And the setup here is pretty darn easy. We'll go over most of this in this video. Next, I want to take a look at some of the other goodies that are within the box. We've got a little tool so you can change your keycaps as well as switches. And then we also have a cable which will charge the device, but then can also be used in wired mode. In addition, I have samples of those new switches that they've been working on. And then we also have our 2.4 gigahertz wireless USB dongle. And there's a couple nice upgrades here. Number one is the original one was just black with no label. This one now is gray and has a label so you know what it's for. In addition, it comes with a cap, and one of the nice perks here is that it actually will attach to the cable. So if you don't want to lose it, you can attach it to the cable, and there you go. And then finally, the keyboard also comes with a couple extra keycaps. By default, the keyboard has a Mac layout, and so this will allow you to swap it over to Windows. And if you'd like, you can also change the colors of the Enter and Escape keys. So now let's go ahead and take a look at the keyboard itself. And to be honest, it gives me a little bit of deja vu because it's almost identical to the previous version that I've been using for the past year. Obviously, the colors are going to be different. This is the white model, and so everything's just a little bit brighter. But when it comes to the feel of the keys, yeah, it's very similar here. If anything, it feels like the new keycaps are just a little bit more slick than the previous one. Now, one thing I did notice is that the up arrow now has a little tactile bump on it. Apparently, this is something that people have been requesting for a while so that it makes it easier to find the arrow keys. So this is a nice little upgrade. Now the I.O. is super simple, but let's go over it anyway. On the left, we can switch between Windows and Mac input. And then to the right of that, we have a switch which will go from off to wired to wireless. And then finally, on the opposite side, we have our USB-C charging port. Now looking at the bottom, there's a couple things I noticed. Number one, the bottom material seems to be a little bit more transparent. And then also, we now have adjustable feet. This is something that wasn't available on the previous version. And we have two different heights here, but to be honest, they're both pretty low profile. For me personally, I like my low profile keyboard to be as low as possible. And so honestly, in my two weeks of testing, I didn't really use these adjustable feet at all. But I do appreciate the fact that they have them available for those who want them. And really, that's about it when it comes to the outer hardware. On the other three sides, there is no I.O. at all, and it does give the keyboard a nice clean look. Next, I want to do a comparison against the black review model that they sent over. Number one, obviously, the colors are now different, but other than that, it seems to be very similar. All the keys are exactly the same, and it's a similar story on the bottom of the keyboard. Although I do really like that black on black look, especially now that it's a little bit more transparent. Next, I want to compare it to the version one keyboard that I've been using for the past year. And as you can see, there's no huge fundamental changes to the overall experience at all. Some of the keycaps have been labeled differently, but I don't think the functions have changed at all. Either way, it just seems to be a very similar experience. And here's a look at the bottom of the version 1. You can see there are no adjustable feet, and the transparent bottom is not quite as transparent as it is in version 2. Now in terms of physical dimensions, it looks to be just about the same. I mean, there's about a quarter millimeter difference between the two in terms of height, but also bear in mind that the new one can get a lot taller if you use those feet. One thing I did notice is there is a bit of a change in weight. 564 grams for the old model, and now it's about 40 grams heavier at 602 with version 2. Next, I'm going to shift gears and talk a little bit about switches. And you can purchase any of these switches directly from their website. And like I mentioned before, we've got a bunch of new options, but for me personally, when I made my order, I just ordered the traditional red. And that's the exact same switch that I had used in my previous model. As you can see here, we have a red switch. And like I mentioned, the white one is the one that I pre-ordered, and as you can see, yeah, I got a red one here as well. Now the switches on the review unit that was sent over to me are different. They are a peach color, and I looked it up and they're called Daisy. Now these are linear switches, much like the red ones, but apparently they have a little bit less actuation force. That means they should be a little bit easier to press down on compared to the reds. And for any of these switches, you can just go to their website and look up the specs in case you want to learn more about it. So let's go ahead and do a quick typing test so you can get a sample of what these are going to sound like. We'll start with my original keyboard with the red switches.
So given the fact that all three of these keyboards are using linear switches, it's really hard to tell the difference between the two when it comes to sound. But I will say that the black keyboard has a more satisfying thunk to it at the very bottom of the key when you press it down all the way. And honestly, I think between the three, this is the one that I like the feel of the most. Now about a month ago I did my first keyboard review, that was for the Apido mechanical keyboard. This one's completely different than the others in the fact that it has blue switches and it's a full size, but I did want to give you a sample right here so you can hear what this one sounds like by contrast. So in a nutshell, it's kind of hard to say what specific switches are going to work best for you, but I will say as far as like linear or gliding keys, these are absolutely awesome. Next, we're going to try out the four samples that came with my keyboard to see if these Nufi ones are a little bit different than the others. And each of these are going to have a different travel distance as well as actuation force. However, bear in mind they're all linear and tactile, which means they're going to be pretty similar. Either way, because I only have one key of each, what we're going to do is take out a bunch of number keys and then put them in instead. And then we're going to go down the number row so that you can hear each of them. And I'm going to leave out the stats as we go through so you know exactly which switch we're using and when. So you don't need to memorize the fact that these are called Moss, Calberry, Aloe, and Wisteria. So we're going to start with the number one key, which has the original Daisy switch still in it. And then we'll work our way down, and by the time we get to six, that's going to be the Daisy one again. So really there you have it, I'm not sure if that was helpful for you or not, I can definitely hear the difference between each of them. And to be honest, the number 4 key, which was the aloe one, was the one that felt the nicest to me. This one has the lowest actuation force, which means it's going to be the easiest to press down on, and I thought it felt really good. Now I also did a bunch of testing when it came to speed typing, but there's a couple things at play right here. Number one, I'm not the fastest typer in the world, and I have pretty bad form as well, so I get about 75 words per minute. And to be honest, the difference between the new one and the old one was basically nothing. Part of that probably has to do with the fact that I've been using the version 1 for a year now, so everything felt very natural for me. But like I mentioned before, with the black keyboard and those daisy switches, which have a little bit less actuation force, I really enjoyed the feeling here. Between the old one and the new one, I think this one is more satisfying of an experience. Now when it comes to pure typing, that doesn't necessarily mean that you have to buy a new keyboard to get this feeling. If you already have the version 1, then you could just buy these new switches and then put them in your old keyboard and it'll probably feel exactly the same. Now one other thing worth noting when it comes to typing is I didn't realize this until I started working on this video, but a lot of people actually put these keyboards on top of their laptop keyboards. And Nufi's aware of that and they actually designed that with that in mind. And so here I am with my 14 inch MacBook and yeah, sure enough, this thing fits on perfectly. And even though it is a little bit silly when I first set it up, the typing experience is much, much better. It is a little bit silly to actually use a keyboard on top of a perfectly working keyboard, but I guess the way I'm thinking about it, if you already have a keyboard and it's readily available, and you are going to be in a moment where you're going to be using a laptop keyboard, this might be a great alternative. Either way, it was just one of those little surprises that I learned about, so I thought I would share. Next, I want to talk about lighting. We'll start with the little strips on each side. On the left side, if you press on the caps lock, it'll turn white, and then also it can give you a connection status indication as well. For example, it'll be blue with Bluetooth, and then if you use the 2.4 GHz wireless, it'll turn green. Now on the right side, this one's a little bit more complicated. It'll give you different colors depending on how much battery life is remaining. Personally, I've never really been able to figure out what this actually means. I just kind of wait till it goes red and then charge it. Now to change the RGB lighting, you're going to hold on the function button and then press one of the arrow keys. Up and down is going to adjust the brightness. You can go all the way up or turn it off if you press down enough. 
And if you press the function and left button, it'll cycle through the 40 different patterns you have to choose from. And I gotta tell you, these patterns are completely overwhelming. I hate the fact that there are 40 different choices because I never know which one is gonna be the right one for me. And so I spend so much time kind of cycling through these to try to find the perfect one for my mood. And then to be honest, I usually just go with the default rainbow one anyway, but it is kind of neat that we have the options to choose from. In fact, my kids love messing around with these to see the other options they have available. They think it's so cool looking. Now, in addition to the 40 patterns you have available, you can also change the solid color as well. By default, it's going to be red, but if you press the function and right button, it'll cycle through the entire rainbow. So in addition to the rainbow RGB, many of these patterns will have just a solid color and you can adjust that there. So in addition to the 40 different patterns that you have, you have just a bunch of different colors as well. And if you combine those together, you really increase the amount of customization you can do when it comes to RGB. Speaking of customization, another thing you can change out are the keycaps. On their website, they have a bunch of different options available. I haven't tried most of these, but one that I have ordered are the shine through ones. And it just so happens that they came with my version two. So let's go ahead and swap those out with the black one. And I'm gonna do a full keyboard swap here. So I'm gonna take out every single one and put in the see-through ones instead. And the whole process took me 10, maybe 15 minutes altogether. And honestly, it was a pretty relaxing experience. I had a lot of fun doing this. It kind of reminded me of putting together a jigsaw puzzle like back in the day. Anyway, once all is said and done, this is what it's gonna look like. And then here's what it looks like with the lights on as well. Now, when turning off the light, you can immediately see that all of the keys are much more illuminated. But one thing I did find is that at the max brightness, the RGB was just a little bit too bright for me now. And so I ended up turning down the RGB to one of the lowest brightness settings, and that seemed to be a good fit for me. Anyway, I really just wanted to show this in case you are interested in having shine through keycaps, this will definitely work. And as a quick comparison, here's what it looks like with the old caps on. And I think between the two, I like the shine through ones better. So I'm going to keep these ones on and use it like this. All right, I think that's about all the testing that I can do with this keyboard. So let's go ahead and start wrapping up and talk about what I like and what I don't like about the version two Nufi Air 75. As you can imagine, there are a lot of things I like about this new keyboard. Number one, it is super comfortable and that's exactly like how it was with the version one. And this is one of those things that's kind of hard to put into words, but it is very natural to use this keyboard. And it's not just because I've been using it for a year, but it was that way with day one as well. Another one of the big strengths of the Nufi Air 75 is how customizable it is. In addition to the fact that we have three different color keyboards to choose from, these switches here are completely hot swappable, which means that you can use any of the eight that they have available. And there's also a bunch of different keycaps you can use as well. In addition, we have all those other RGB options. And so I think that combination just really means you can make this your own. I also appreciate all the connectivity options we have. In addition to three different Bluetooth connections, we can also do 2.4 wireless as well as wired. I'm also a fan of the fact that they increased the battery. That was probably one of my biggest complaints about the original one. I had to charge that about every three days. And really when it comes down to it, this is just a really satisfying experience. Not only are the keys just really fun to press down on, but I feel like this keyboard has all the features I could ever want. And then a couple others that make me want to explore more about keyboards in the first place. So yeah, overall, I just find this to be a really satisfying keyboard to use. Now, of course, nothing is perfect. And so I did have to try to find a couple things that I didn't like about this device. And I came up with two. Number one, even with that larger battery, it's still not like super long life, especially when you're using the RGB lighting. With the lighting on, it's gonna last about a week before you need to charge it. Now, whether or not that's gonna be enough for you is really gonna be a personal preference. But I will say that going forward, unless I'm gonna be typing in the dark, I'll probably leave the RGB light off. That way I can have longer battery life. And according to the website, it'll give you about 220 hours that way. So that might be worth it. And finally, the other nitpick that I have about this keyboard is that there is no ISO layout. This is the layout that is used in many parts of Europe. Now I live in the United States, so it really doesn't apply to me, but all the same, I do wish that they would expand it for other audiences. And that really comes down to the fact that this is such a good keyboard that I kind of want everyone to use it. So in the end, you're probably wondering whether or not I recommend the Air 75 version two. And I kind of have two schools of thoughts about it. The first one is that I think this is probably going to be my last mechanical keyboard review for a good long time. And that's because the version two of the Air 75 really does hit all the wickets for me. And so I don't really have a desire to test out anything else. And it's very rare when I get to that point with any product on the market where I'm like, okay, I'm done forever at this point. Now, I don't want to make any promises about that because if there's a version three coming out, I may want to test that as well. 
But as it stands, I think that's a really good indication of how much I like this keyboard and the fact that I really don't wanna make more content about it. And then finally, my second school of thought is how it's going to apply to you. And I think what it really comes down to is are you in the market for a keyboard and are you willing to spend about $120? And do you want a keyboard that has a low profile? I think that if all three of those factors apply to you, then yes, the Air 75 version two is going to be an excellent fit for you in your use case. So really that's about it for this video. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Do you have one of these keyboards? Are you interested in getting one? And what do you think? As always, thank you for watching and be sure to like and subscribe if you found this helpful and we will see you next time. Happy gaming.